students who have completed or are about to complete their undergraduate education who either have a very, very good idea that they want to pursue a career that involves rigorous and substantively varied research that can be inside the academy, that can be outside of the academy. That's one portfolio. The other sort of portfolio or the other type of student is the student who has almost completed the undergraduate education or has completed it and isn't yet quite sure. Um, they have a number of ideas of what they would like to pursue, but they need an environment to really sort of test drive those ideas without boxing themselves in. So what we found over time is that the first type of student, the one who kind of knows, uh, it turns out when they are exposed to say the academy at a sort of graduate and PhD level, we, even though this is a master's program, its distinctness lies in the fact that our students can join PhD students in the PhD level seminars in all sorts of different departments across the university, especially the social sciences division. So once they enter this environment that they thought they wanted to enter or, or knew enough about, it turns out they learn a lot more being inside, being exposed, 15 to 20% end up pursuing a PhD or a JD. That is down from the 40 to 50% who enter the program thinking that they might want to do this. So for the first type of student, the program helps them, if you will, eliminate options or um, reconsider or affirm the choices that they thought they, would go, that they were going to make. For the second type of student who has some ideas about what they might want to do with a research degree, it allows them to sort of travel around the university in different departments and different schools and really just try things out. I know this sounds a little bit odd given this is a one year program. Uh, people may say, well, doesn't it take longer <laughs> to do this? Well, the way we've structured it, the way our mentorship model works, we pair every student with a dedicated uh, postdoc postdoctoral advisor we pair every student with a faculty advisor. It turns out there's actually a lot of very, very close mentorship so that as soon as students receive feedback as to what they like or what they dislike, we can then tweak their curriculum for the next quarter. And by the end of the year, they have a pretty good idea what they don't want. And they also have a very good idea of what they do want. Um, and that's when our sort of extracurricular work with internships, et cetera, kicks in to kind of reinforce these choices uh, that the students have made over the course of the year. So since this is a, an interdisciplinary program, uh, we, we need to strike a balance between having our students really get to branch out fully and pursue their individual interests and still maintaining some kind of cohesiveness when it comes to having a curriculum that tells outsiders that this is an international relations degree so that there's some kind of basic exposure uh, to some foundational concepts, but also to the kinds of tools that allows our students to really um, write what is the cornerstone of the entire operation, which is an independently crafted uh, MA thesis that is really modeled after a sort of publishable um, academic article. So the core curriculum takes care of building these kinds of skills for everybody. It's also really animated by the principles of equitable access. We are trying to make sure that no matter where you come from, no matter what kinds of education you have received, you will be able to succeed in this very sort of rigorous environment. And then on top of that, uh, we provide an extracurricular experience that has to do with professional development. Um, we mentor students throughout the year and even after they graduate, should they choose to apply to a PhD program. We have a sort of dedicated um, mentorship platform for that. We mentor folks 
uh, on the professional development track. So we, we for example, uh, have begun to uh, team up with colleagues at the university to take students while they are in CIR. This speaks to the sort of trying things out philosophy. Take them to places where the kinds of jobs that they're thinking about are actually located, such as a think tank trek to DC, an international uh, organization's trek to New York. Even though this is a, an advanced research degree, a postgraduate degree, uh, what is counterintuitive about this program? That it is resisting early specialization. We're taking a, what we call a whole cohort approach, where we expose the entire cohort to a common curriculum that is pretty broad in its orientation. And once that curriculum has been completed, students are able to specialize in all sorts of ways. But the students who get the most out of this experience and who really succeed are those who do not silo themselves off too quickly, who do not say stay in their comfort zone of say sociology only or political science only or law only, but who take a substantive research interest and then find those research interests represented in different schools, in different departments, and learn about how each discipline handles the what look like similar questions, but handles them slightly differently. That allows you to develop a language um, that is much more um, elastic and that allows you to actually speak to audiences that may not even speak to each other before you join them. And so this idea of brokerage, the idea of standing between different conversations that are at some level about the same thing and you're being able to translate what these conversations are about from one idiom into another idiom, I think that is a unique skill. The official guidelines on the website are obviously worth paying close attention to, but aside from those guidelines, some things are simply more important to us than others. The most important thing, the thing that everybody who reviews applications for the committee looks at first, is the statement of interest. What does the student want to study? And really looking forward, this is what I, the student, want to study. This is what I would like my faculty to teach me. This is the kinds of faculty I've done my research. These are the kinds of people that I believe will help me study these things. So to really center the research, the research interests, and then of course to also give us a sense as far as the student, the applicant knows at this point, what do they want to do with this? What, once, these, once this research is completed or underway, what kinds of careers uh, in the research world are they thinking about? So that's the most important thing. The, the other thing that is really important is the writing sample. This is a research and writing intensive program. Um, no matter what people do, with their, in their spare time, with their extracurriculars, of which there are many. Um, every class that, every one of these nine classes that a student will enroll in requires a massive amount of reading and writing. And while we can lift students up, we have a dedicated writing program for professional academics and professional researchers at the university. Um, while we can lift people up from a baseline, while we can really hone those skills, we cannot teach basic academic writing. That already has to be sort of in place. And so we will look very closely at the statement of interest, and we will look very closely at the writing sample. You will notice that I haven't yet even talked about grades. I haven't yet talked about GRE scores. Uh, 
The grades are obviously a signal of past academic achievement, but we read these, um, these grades, these transcripts very, very holistically with the rest of the application. We tend to apply what's called a peak performance standard, which means that even if you tanked one quarter or one semester in your life, this is not going to disqualify you from consideration. We're going to look at your best semester. We're not going to flag your worst semester. Um, and the other thing to be said about the test scores, um, we have the division has currently made them optional for a lot of programs. CIR is one of them. Um, the GRE is no longer uh, as central a piece of the admissions process as it once was.